years, the number of people that told me the same story about their first experience with KI. That story was, I walked into an arcade and I heard this sound. Ultra Combo! I end up at Rare for my first visit to Rare. They showed me a pitch for a game called Brute Force. Brute Force was basically Mortal Kombat. So I get up on the equivalent of a whiteboard and I draw out what I what I believed is something they should be thinking about. And literally in that meeting, I talked about open, auto double, end finisher, combo breaker, and ultra combo. So a couple days later, Howard Lincoln walks into my office and he says, yeah, Rare wants you to go back. They want to talk about that fighting game. Cool. Well, over the next year, I was back and forth from Rare seven, eight times. I hired a team inside the treehouse to help balance this game, and my dream of finally making an arcade game came true. The world was just starting to dabble with motion capture. So Rare had this crazy toy called Flock of Birds where you had to have all these little wires all over your body with magnets, and then you had to stand on top of this humongous electric electromagnet, and honestly, it broke about every 20 to 30 minutes. So the funny thing is, if you look back on the original Killer Instinct and you think maybe the animation of this particular character, who I love very much, Riptor, isn't quite as good as the animation of a character like Jago or TJ Combo, etc. Some of that is directly related to how long we could keep the flock of birds from breaking. So we built the kind of beginnings of that first combo. And then like I was doing that year, I flew back to Redmond. Um, I get this awesome phone call at like, five in the afternoon, which means it's like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning at Rare. Oh, you gotta hear this! And it's just like, Chris? You know, and all of a sudden I hear the phone get jammed up to a speaker. They had just put in the first hit sounds. And I think that they believed in what we were doing up to that point, but as soon as you could hear it, you could hear the hits of a combo. That's when they flipped to, this is gonna work. We then brought in all the audio people and decided audio is going to mean more to this game than any other game in the arcade ever. That's what led to the screaming announcer. That's what led to literally a few months of trying to get the hits sound right. And we made sure that we had speakers on the arcade machine that were loud enough. Even if the owner of the arcade tried to turn our machine down, the loudest thing that came out of the original arcade, ultra combo. We wanted to make sure you could hear it from across the arcade. And again, it worked. It drew people in little crowds they would play Killer Instinct. The other interesting part of the creation of the original Killer Instinct was uh, Pete Cox and Chris Stamper designed the hardware. It wasn't somebody else's arcade hardware. So they built the hardware from scratch. They built the tools to take these sprites and get them into their board. And we shipped the game to test in about 10 months. It ended up shipping final in about 12 months after we had started working on it. Killer Instinct. <laughs> We listen, and Killer Instinct is back, only on Xbox One. So it's the middle of the Xbox 360 days, and I'm running XBLA. Ken Lobb was actually my boss at the time, and his office is literally right next to mine. A lot of the times we will play KI Go on N64. <laughs> So we play a lot and we keep on saying like, my God, this game is awesome. We need to bring this game back. And of course, I've always wanted to bring back Killer Instinct. I tried, we, we couldn't do it. The time wasn't right. There were other projects that we were doing at the time. I was sitting in a, um, one of our production meetings where we plan, kind of look at our portfolio. What games are we doing? What are we not doing? At the end of the meeting, I kind of raised that question. Why don't we have a fighting game? Ted Woolsey, who ran the XBLA department at the time said, you need to talk to Ken Lobb. And he comes to me and he's like, I think I can do Killer Instinct, you know? So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and we sat down, he showed me the RFP of what he thought Killer Instinct was. It couldn't have been any closer to right. Send it out and then multiple developers pitch their ideas on how they would do KI. All of them had different interests in doing Killer Instinct. But during the process, as after we sent out the first wave and we were thinking about other developers that we could include, uh, Chris Charlo, who runs our ID at Xbox program now, um, came into my office and he said, hey, I used to work at this company called Foundation 9, which is the parent company of Double Helix. And they did this game, Green Lantern. Um, they've known, they've done brawlers and all this kind of stuff for a while. I have no idea if it's any good. Check it out. So I took the game home, I booted it up, and on the surface, 
it was like, okay, yeah, it's a Green Lantern. It's a, it's a movie tie-in game. But the thing that really stood out was behind the story and the IP and all that, there was this really solid fighting game under there, a brawler, but it was a really good brawler. So I think this is the probably maybe this is the first time someone has actually said on camera, thanks, Hollywood. I guess it was a good idea for us, at least. So the team at Double Helix really uh, had a challenge in front of them, even though they had all this history with doing brawlers. There are a lot of concepts and a lot of work to go into figuring out how to get from a spec into a game that actually is balanced and is fun. In fighting games, engine can be everything. I mean, ideas, of course, are very important, but if you don't have an engine to do your crazy ideas, you're kind of stuck. It has to be 60 frames. You have to have 60 frames a second input, collision, everything has to be perfect, great net code. Everything in game development is not perfect. Um, although it's always fun, at least the way, that's the way I like to keep it. I mean, we did not have a lot of time. Uh, uh, we basically had about a year. I, I was like, this is kind of insane. This is crazy. There's no way we're going to be able to do this in time. You have the plane coming in for a landing and they're building the runway underneath you, right? That's that's what working on a launch title is like. There is things that came together like, you know, 11th hour. You would not believe how close this game was to just not having multiplayer, <laughs> period. We, we weren't sure that, uh, you know, multiplayer was even gonna work. When you're in a situation where there's that much pressure, you know, there's going to be a little, you know, conflict <laughs> between, you know, <laughs> between creatives. There are lots of discussions, I will say. Some more polite than others. Some involved quite a bit of swearing at each other. It's honestly my favorite part of the game is getting into passionate debate with a creative on a team that has something they know is right and I know my thing is right. And you can take the best thing that everybody is saying and end up making something that's a little better. I know what KI was. It was a very cool game for its time. The fighting genre had moved ahead. So we had to take what was awesome about the original KI, just the, the essence of that, and make a modern fighting game based uh, upon that. Combo breakers. Of course we're gonna have combo breakers. Of course we're gonna have auto devils. And the announcer, the characters, the kind of, the embracing a menagerie of fighters, which no other fighting game really does, that was what was important to KI, the music, right? Like those things were the important things. We wanted to see if we could actually create a fighting game that did things differently than other fighting games. Uh, one of the first things we wanted to do to make the game as open and as accessible as possible was that we kind of, uh, we simplified the controls. So we kind of set this like barrier, this bar for controls will be no more complex than this. Just watching a new player pick it up and just play and see great big combos and laugh and smile, uh, that's that's just well worth it. It's It just makes KI something that anybody can pick up and play and have fun. The next thing that we did that brought kind of brought KI to the masses is we made the game essentially free. It's like the best trial you could ever have from the XBLA days built into the game. But hey, then you could a la carte the game depending on how you wanted to play. What this really did and when we saw this is when the game came out, this was super successful. There were hundreds of thousands of players who, who were playing the game. There was this really, really robust competitive scene that emerged almost like immediately and it really blew up the game. It really um, made it super popular. We actually wanted to give the player more value and choice. That's kind of why we did what we did. Obviously, being where we are now and looking back three years of having done this and kind of set this out, and seeing how the other fighting games have reacted to that strategy, I think that we probably made the right decision. The first E3 happened. We actually showed the game and luckily the fans liked what we were doing. Coming to your home in 2013, all on Xbox One! Ultra! So as we were getting out of the end of uh, Killer Instinct Season 1, we were under debate of do we want a Season 2? The answer was yes. Surprise to us, um, Amazon bought Double Helix. Double Helix is getting bought. Da! <laughs> you know, that was a scary few days. We believe Iron Galaxy would be able to do it, and that's why we call Mr. Dave Lang. When we got the chance to work on Killer Instinct, uh, we didn't say no. Uh, we did a trip out to Double Helix. They were awesome about getting us spun up on their engine and tools and pipelines. Even like core philosophies behind the game. We had a pretty strong foundation from Double Helix, a game that people really enjoyed. And so first and foremost, it was, hey, no sudden movements, don't get too crazy, 
uh, let's do what we think is really cool, but at the same time respect what's in there. But then we had a very aggressive ship date uh, where we wanted to, uh, you know, keep momentum on the game. So we wanted to release it in uh, in October of uh, 2014. And we were committed to showing TJ Combo at E3, which is in June. We had like eight weeks. Oh, and we just got a new developer. Uh, what can we do? This is gonna be the first thing people see from us. We have to kill it. We have to kind of quelch any doubts people have about this new developer kind of taking over their baby. And uh, so we really, really put a lot of pressure on ourselves to deliver something really strong for E3. Is that the best you got, Ultra Tech? And the character came off really, really well. TJ was super, super fun. And getting to be at the show and see fans come up and get their hands on the sticks and play TJ for the first time and really just put the smiles on their faces. Uh, it made all those kind of fears and trepidations kind of just melt away. And it was super, super gratifying and uh, definitely one of my best memories of the project. And it's just been a wonderful partnership because, you know, finding game developers are few and far between. And we were fortunate enough to not only find a great one once, but a second one twice with Killer Instinct. One of the coolest things about Killer Instinct is the fact that you have all these different characters that actually come together in in one game. I love the opportunity of bringing guests into Killer Instinct. If you think about it, what what is Killer Instinct? It's a monster mashup. You have the dinosaurs fighting the robot and then fighting General Ram fighting the Arbiter. This is kind of like the dream match, right? It's literally like how kids will play with toys. They don't care which, they don't just separate the toys, they all play together. It was a game designed to have a ninja, because, you know, fighting games, and a bunch of guests. So if I'm gonna build a game where I can naturally drop in a battle toad, makes perfect sense in KI. I'm gonna bring in General Rom. I'm gonna bring in, you know, etc., etc., etc. Guest characters makes a lot of sense because they bring in different fans, so to cross over in the uh, cross over between the different games. There's been a whole bunch of times that I've had I've worked with other IPs that weren't mine, and one of the things I always really strive to do is like we need to respect the IP. We need to understand what makes it wonderful and magical um, from the people that own the IP and the ones that develop it, and then really capture that in our game. And the thing that's been so awesome about working with the teams that we've been able to shall we say, borrow guest characters from, they all love Killer Instinct. The first one was was Rash from Battletoads. And that was actually like really awesome. Like the, the reason he looks so good in game is because we actually started with a character model that Rare had developed. They had created this really awesome high poly model of Rash for the Rare replay box art. So we actually like took their model and you know we we worked with IG to get that uh, rigged, and then we went back to the original Battletoads game, you know, made sure he was really authentic. We want him to have like a target combo that feels like the like Battletoads and the Brawler with the boom 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 bam. Uh, we want to see him doing his morphing stuff with the big boot. We want to see the, the blade legs, the, the big wrecking ball thing that he does in the actual Battletoads. True story. Since season one, I've been bugging. Um, my boss and Bonnie lightly at 343 about like, hey, can I have Arbiter? We felt that yes. he just makes sense yes. with the plasma sword and we're all fans, right? This, that character is just amazing. 343 loves Killer Instinct. So they took that as seriously as we did. We're like, hey, we want to put Arbiter in our game. Here's all the assets from the Arbiter from Halo 5. Here's here's all of his weapons. Here's all the lore of them. Here's all the cool things. You notice like Arbiter's level just it looks like a, it's right out of Halo 5. That's because a lot of it is. All the characters that we want to bring into Killer Instinct, they need to kind of fit that bill. It's not just, hey, here's a character. It might fit a trope. It's, no, here's a character that we know, respect, and love from another game, and we would like to treat that character with the respect that they deserve. If we don't capture the character correctly, we're doing a disservice to, not just to Killer Instinct, but to the IP that we're representing. There's something magic about really any competitive game but to work on a fighting game where Adam and I are sitting down with a build that's only a couple months old and it's already fun to just play again and again and again and then they the developer tweaks, we ask for some stuff, you get some good debates and then there's a new build and it's fun and you play and play and play. These are my favorite parts of working on a fighting game. So what's really exciting about working on KI is that we're always doing something new every month or every other month. Characters are coming out, we're updating modes, we're releasing new modes that surprise people, and it's just exciting because we just continue to grow. We've, we're almost at almost 7 million players. 
We don't even know where we're going to stop. I don't think we're going to. It was hard to make Killer Instinct. Man, it was fun. And again, I still, I, I love those days. I love working on it now. Uh, our industry, it's, it's an honor to make games. It was an honor to work with Rare on Killer Instinct. Thank you everybody so much for playing Killer Instinct. I still play almost every day and it's not because it's a job, right? It's, and it's not even because it's a hobby. I, I just love fighting games and I've been honored and proud to be able to be part of Killer Instinct.